The Backstage Experience starts now. Welcome to the Backstage Experience as we take you backstage with the biggest names and games in entertainment. This week, we travel to the world-famous Sunset Strip in Hollywood, California to talk all things horror with Kevin Bacon and the cast of Maxine at the iconic Rainbow Bar and Grill. Netflix's hit series Viking Valhalla is coming to an end. We catch up with the series stars Leo Suter and Sam Corlett about filming the intense battle scenes and growing those epic beards. Plus, it's one of the highest rated TV series of all time. X-Men 97 star Lenore Zahn gives us a backstage look at playing Rogue in the hit Marvel series. All this and more, only on The Backstage Experience. Welcome to The Backstage Experience. I'm John Stenvall. I'm Dave Morales. Have you ever played the game? I know you played the game. How close are you Six to degrees Kevin of Kevin Bacon. Bacon? It's a hard game to play. You're very close to Kevin Bacon. It's gone up after this episode. All right, and you, yes, you watching us here at The Backstage Experience, your six degrees of Kevin Bacon is about to get closer because he is stopping by this episode along with his co-star, Elizabeth DeBecky. They're gonna talk about their brand new film. And Giancarlo Esposito, Gustavo is joining us as well. He's in the movie Maxine with Kevin Bacon. Gustavo from Breaking Bad. It's a funny interview. I know you're scared. He terrifies me, but he's one of the nicest guys. He'll be stopping by as well. And if that wasn't enough, Vikings Valhalla enters their final season on Netflix. I know you're a big fan of that one. We're talking with the cast and there is a massive, massive series. It's one of the highest rated series of all time. X-Men 97, the cast is joining us on the show. That's right, the voice of Rogue, I bet. She's going to drop some rogue lines. As we do every episode, we catch you up with all things gaming. David Johnson, tell us what's up. The return of a college football giant, the next chapter in Final Fantasy, and esports is finally hitting the Olympic stage. All that and more this week in gaming on the Backstage Experience. The last college football game released in 2013, which was the summer release of NCAA 14. After an NCAA ruling about paying players for their likeness and their image, the NCAA football franchise effectively ended and has been dormant for 11 years until this week. EA Sports College Football 25 is the first new college football game in over a decade and all 134 FBS football programs are included in the game. Multiple commentary teams are also included. You can take over a team and create a 30-year dynasty or create your own college star and balance your life to bring glory to your favorite team. ESPN even licensed stadium architecture and accurate music, thematic crowd noise and chants, and team-specific rivalries. After three years of development, College Football 25 is here and slated to be one of the biggest sports games ever. As gaming and esports continues its meteoric rise, the International Olympic Committee has officially taken notice. The inaugural Olympic esports games will begin in 2025 in Saudi Arabia, and they have inked a 12-year agreement to host the games until 2037. Saudi Arabia is also currently investing $39 billion into its infrastructure to become the premier video game hub of the world, part of its worldwide effort to diversify their image away from just oil. Back in 2013, Square Enix debuted Final Fantasy XIV, a new entry in the long-running franchise that launched as a massive multiplayer online RPG game. 11 years later, Final Fantasy XIV is still going strong, becoming the most profitable entry in the entire franchise and housing a player base of over 55 million players. This marks the release of the new story DLC, Dawn Trail, which takes place two years after the previous DLC, Endwalker. Naoki Yoshida, the director of Final Fantasy XIV, has stated he has even bigger plans for the game showing that Dawn Trail will be the first step for the next 10 years of story coming to the game. He envisions the finale set for a release in 2034, wrapping up a near 20-year story. 
And finally, one of the biggest theme park simulation games is getting a much needed sequel. Frontier has announced Planet Coaster 2, which looks to be a huge step up from the previous game, allowing players to now create water attractions like slides, wave pools, and lazy rivers, and includes a first person mode so you can experience your attractions firsthand. The second game also features a new shared sandbox simulation mode, meaning you and a friend can plan out and build your own dream park together. There's a new slasher horror movie out that Giancarlo Esposito stars in. And Dave, the first time you ever met Giancarlo, you're actually pretty scared. Giancarlo Esposito, known as Gustavo from Breaking Bad, he just scares me, that character. And he's one of the nicest guys out there. Uh, yeah, he stars along with some of his co-stars. This movie, Maxine, it's the latest in the X movie franchise. If you're familiar with those movies, it's slasher, it's gory, it's horror, it's very rated R. They're going to tell you more about it. This is Maxine. All right, here we are. Can I just tell you, everybody watching, we're at the Rainbow on Sunset. Do you know how many times I've eaten the pizza here? It's phenomenal, by the way. And it's just surreal for me to like be working now, uh, talking about this yeah. film. It's like, it's crazy. And I say that because last night at the premiere at Grauman's, you made a, a comment about Bucket List, and, and you said, I've always wanted to do a big, and there's a scene in the movie. Well, you all were there. Is it, how special is it to do, you hear about world premieres at you know the Chinese theater, you there. Yeah, it lived up to expectations. I mean, I've always wanted to do that because it's such a historic theater and it's such, growing up, that's where movie premieres happened. Yeah. And, I mean, everything from from the theater when it was built, that's when they were they, they started doing it. And that was the purpose of it, was the pageantry and the celebration of, of these like grand movie palace ways in the heart of Hollywood. So the fact that it's still here, the fact that it's still a tourist thing, and the fact that they still do premieres, and that we could play the movie there, and it's a 900 seat theater and it's a huge screen, I mean, that's, that's the goal as a filmmaker. And to be part of that history, especially with a movie like this, that actually has a scene that takes place there, it was very strange to sit in the theater and see the theater on the screen and be in the theater. It was like, that's a once in a lifetime kind of experience. And so, you know, for me, that was what I was People hoping People dream to have. Of, of that moment. 100%. And I mean, I was in the audience at a movie premiere in Hollywood and you know, that to me, I'm not even in the movie and I was, it was a special moment. How much fun was this to make? Uh, it was a lot of fun. It, I mean, it was my first movie, and I was really yeah. Good job. Thank <laughs> you. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I was scared, and that's fun. Being scared is fun, which is why people like horror movies. But all of the like messed up stuff that happens in it, I I thought was gonna be like really intense to do, but it was just fun. Really it, fun. It, okay. I know I mentioned the pizza, but. The fried chicken here is really good too. Excellent. I say that <laughs> just because. I lent them my chefs. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, now I'm getting the creeps ready. I have to do that. Uh, the props, the stuff that was there to be set in the 80s. To look at that stuff, was it just like another like surreal moment? Like, For me, it is. Yes. I mean, I, I walk into a room and the first thing I do is look. And I walk onto a set and I want to look because I want to be inspired by what's there. And when I walk into my office, I was like, yeah, got it right. Just got it right. When I sat on that bicycle, I remember those bicycles with bands in them <laughs> that are so hard to push. And I went, yes, got it right. You know, um, that's inspiring for an actor. When you have all the elements around you that come together in such a seamless way, then you feel like you belong there. Um, and then you're, 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 you're feeling right about it. We travel to the world famous Sunset Strip in Hollywood, California, to talk all things horror with Kevin Bacon and the cast of Maxine. Look, I've been in a bunch of horror movies. Yeah, you have. And I've had so many friends, family members, whatever, say, nah, I can't watch that. I'm like, really? Only on the Backstage Experience. Welcome back to the Backstage Experience. Okay, there's a slasher movie. It's very gory. It's very rated R. But it's a lot of fun. It is actually a lot of fun. And, and as I've said here on the show several times, I'm terrified of, of scary movies. But it's Kevin Bacon. So you played the game Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon. How close are you? You're about to be two degrees because we have him along with his co-star, Elizabeth Debicki, talking about their roles and answering the important question, are they afraid of scary movies? Take a look. This is Maxine. I'm curious, did you always want to be in that line of work? I always wanted to be famous. If you need to read off the sides we gave you, just go ahead, all right? I know the lines. 
She turns to the camera and, through her trauma, addresses the lens directly. Uh, it's good to see you again, and this is our first in person. We've done virtual before. Okay. So I guess that makes the degree for other friends even closer because I'm actually here with you. Okay. You hear that all the time. <laughs> I do, but you know, you play the game any way you want. There it is. Um, how did this role make you like reflect on your career even? Did you give it like thought like with a nods to Hollywood? I found it very satisfying to be in a movie inside of a movie. Yeah. I really l enjoyed that mirror because I think it's, um, there, there, there's great accuracy there. There's also diplomacy and it's also quite tongue in cheek. So I thought that was a nice combination to play. I walked away from the part and I thought Liz Bender was so easily accessible for me that I feel that I could bring her out in my life a lot more often, particularly when I'm taking meetings in <laughs> Hollywood. So yeah, That's good. she's a very satisfying person to play because she's actually just hyper honest and uh, yes. and unapologetically honest. I think we over apologize a lot uh, in general and it's a little bit tiring. So it was quite freeing to just not have that that extra layer of behavior. She doesn't have that. So. Okay, most important question I'm gonna ask. Do you like, I've never asked you this, do you like scary movies? I'm a chicken. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah I do, I do. And I'm always kind of surprised I'm always surprised when people don't. Do you, do you know what I mean? Because that's the one, I think that's the one genre that people will say, no, I just don't do that. You know what I mean? Like if you said, oh, I just, I cannot watch a romantic comedy. I mean, who would say that? Of course you can watch a romantic comedy, right? But with horror, it's fine. You could say, I don't watch them. I have so many, like I've been in a bunch of horror movies. Yeah, you have. And I've had so many friends family members, whatever, say, nah, I can't watch that. I'm like, really? You think, is it that, does it feel that real? I guess it does. And I guess that's the, that's the job, right? To make people feel something. And if they feel like, you know, turning it off or covering their eyes, you're doing your job right. We're not all as brave as you. It's not that brave. But I think it's like a, for me, it's like, it goes in my, it, it, when it works, it's like, it's, it, you're, my, my whole body is responding to it. It's more about like, can I go to sleep at night? Will it haunt me? Also, people respond differently at the different level. Like some people yes. are fine with blood, but don't like torture. I mean, if you even look at a movie like Maxine, you could probably, I mean, there's there's a couple of set pieces of, of you know, horrible stuff that happens. You know, everybody might have a, a different reaction to all of them. Although I can pretty much guarantee which one men will react to the most. <laughs> and we did. Without going into detail. Now we filmed those interviews at the world famous Rainbow Bar and Grill on Sunset Boulevard, which has a ton of history in the rock and roll area. They also have really, really good pizza. All right. This, and fried cheese. Dude, the food there is amazing. It's so good. It was crazy because we've been there, you know, for dinner and now we're working and talking to Kevin Bacon and the rest of the cast. Kevin actually came after we did that interview and actually sat down and had lunch with us. Yeah, afterwards. he said, he goes, so what's this pizza all about? Kevin Bacon, by the way, is one of the nicest guys. He's like a next door neighbor just mowing his yard on a Saturday morning. And I want to say Gustavo, but Giancarlo Esposito was talking about the fried chicken as well. He was. It's uh, yeah. All right. So let me tell you about Maxine. Uh, it is the latest in the X movie franchise. These are horror slash movies. They're saying that this is the last one, but I think there might be one more. The fact that Kevin Bacon and Elizabeth Debicki in this movie, though, really added. And there's some really gory scenes, though, like John said, that will make you chuckle. Leif Erikson is one of the best known Vikings of all time. Now that Netflix's hit series Vikings Valhalla is coming to an end, we sit down with stars Sam Corlett and Leo Suter about portraying the iconic characters in the show's epic battle scenes. The endurance speed of the physicality was actually, yeah, it was, it was it's quite a bit more than I anticipated. That's coming up next. Only on the Backstage Experience.
Welcome back to the backstage experience. If you've been a fan of Vikings Valhalla, I have some bad news. It's the third and final season on Netflix. I know you've seen it um, and you know the characters actually more than I do. Yeah, so Sam Cortland and Leo Sutter star in Vikings Valhalla. They actually play real Vikings, you know, real characters from back in the day. So Dave, you actually got to talk to them about being a Viking. Why not? I know people growing dress, the beard, you growing know, the beard, the fight scene. Vikings always have beards. That's just a requirement. It's in the handbook. If you're going to be a Viking, you have to have the beard. They'll tell you more. This is Vikings Valhalla. <laughs> what makes a king successful? Two types of strength. Strength of mind. Intelligence. And the power to defend your position. Physical. Strength. Hello, gentlemen. How are we today? Good, man. How are you? I am doing great. It's good to see you both. I feel I, I literally just got through this like last night. So I'm like the high that I'm on from watching this series is just unbelievably incredible for me. Um, Sam, I'm going to start with you. How much more physical was this than you anticipated? Uh, it, 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 the endurance speed of the physicality was actually, yeah, it was, it was, it's quite a bit more than I anticipated, but it actually really welcomed that a, a very primal, uh, nature to my life, but also that was able to feed into every scene that came across on the page, you know, whether it be a look in the eyes to someone or whether it be, you know, the, the action, action sequences, it was all, um, it was feeding each other. Leo, do you find it more fascinating the fact that these stories were based, your characters in particular, based on real people? Tell me about the fascination with that. Yeah, I, I think it's a real joy to have the opportunity to, to learn some history and to dive into a world that's a millennia ago. Um, but it's also what I think what's most fascinating about it is that we're still talking about it a thousand years ago. The feat that these guys did, guys and girls, um, did is 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 why we're we're making a TV show. They were extraordinary people. Leo, I'm going to stick with you, and Sam, you're going to get the same question. How long does it take to film a fight scene? Because I I've been praying for everybody involved. I swear it looks like people are going to really get hurt. <laughs> I'm like, no, no. They're very physical. How long does it take to film? Well, in, tr in truth, if you were to really look at that whole process, probably several months because. The stunt team come up with it. This is before the actors introduced to it. It's tested, it's, does it match the episode? Does it match the character? Then the actor comes in and then there's a couple of weeks of learning choreography. One of the joys actually is you spend weeks and weeks training it and preparing for it, usually going at what we call half speed. And then when you get to set for one day or one afternoon, everything accelerates, the adrenaline is pumping. So then you get to release this, this dance that you've been working on for, for weeks and weeks. All right, Sam, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change the question. This is a fun one. Who, and I'm glad you guys, when I, when I saw you on the screen, I'm like, great, this is a great question. Who has the best beard? Leo, I have to sit for an hour and a half every morning to get my beard put on. I'm not that manly. I'm still going through puberty right now. <laughs> no, man, Johannes, Johannes. Johannes, That's yeah. a heck of a beard. A beard. Oh. Yeah, Johannes Olaf, he certainly has an amazing beard. And I just want to say quickly, Dave, I love your interviews. I've listened to them and they're brilliant. Thank you so much. And we had a chance to speak today. Wow, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate that. It's, I, I love this. I watched this with my mom and she's listening to my ride. And the fact that we get to talk today really, really excites me. So thank you so much. And Leo, by the way, uh, you know what? If, if Sam's going to give you props on the beard, you know, own it. Matter of fact, you should name the beard. Well, Sam, no, I name it, I name it Momoa. It looks like Jason Momoa's beard. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll own it. <laughs> Thank you all so much and appreciate the kind words. You all stay safe. Let's do this in person next time, okay? Sounds good, man. Thank you all. Take care. Bye-bye. It's one of the highest rated series of all time. After a two-decade hiatus, Marvel's X-Men 97 is back and bigger than ever. Before we go, Lenore Zahn reveals what it's like to return as Rogue in the coveted Marvel franchise. Only on the Backstage Experience.
Welcome back to the Backstage Experience. Now, before we go, we're going to catch up with one of the actresses, voice actresses of one of the biggest series of all time. Of course, we're talking about X-Men 97. I mean, this thing, video games, TV series, you're a fan. Yeah, I am. Lenore Zan, who plays Rogue in the series. We talk about her voicing the character in X-Men 97. X-Men. Season one is now complete. Uh, mm -hmm. Tell me what your thoughts are and what you feel looking back at everything you all have accomplished so far. Well, first of all, I gotta say what a treat it is to come back. Um, I mean, not everybody gets an opportunity to play a superhero even once in their life, let alone twice. It's amazing. Yeah. I mean, I have so many people come up to me at the Comic Cons now with their children. And the kids are anywhere from six right through to 23, and they're watching it at home with their parents. One little six-year-old girl said to me, I watched episode five six times. <laughs> like, I looked to the father, he goes, yeah, she keeps asking. He said, we talked to her about death and what it is, and she understands, she says, yes, and I feel so sorry for you because you lost not just one boyfriend, but two. And I'm like, oh my God, from the mouths of babes. So they're getting it. The yeah. kids are loving it. Magneto, the last will and testament of Charles Xavier. Everything he built now belongs to me.